Open Minds Performing Online Experiments 24-7. I'll say something about 24-7. I mean, we are going to tell you how we're available in principle. The apparatus that we're talking about will be available 24-7, but we are still restricted by uh, the Earth. So when we're talking about astronomy and so on, you've got to wait until it's dark where the telescope is. So <laughs> some, some things are constrained. But I, let me tell you first about the Internet of Laboratory Things, which is a strapline that we have developed over the duration of this project. Um, I looked up in that well-known source, which all academics go to when they first want to explore a subject, uh, Wikipedia. Um, actually, it's, it's not bad. I pay money to them to, uh, to improve, so let's keep them going. The Internet of Laboratory Things wasn't there, but the Internet of Things was. And I found that actually, if we just highlight what's in the Internet of Things, then we've got a description of what it is that we're going to do, what we are doing. Smart devices, embedded, sensors, actuators, network connectivity to collect and exchange data. That is meat and drink to a scientist and to an engineer uh, and to a technologist and to a mathematician. So it's, it's STEM. <laughs> We're very inclusive. Now, let me ask you this. I'll, I'll tell you the answer in a minute. Uh, what do you call a space for active learning in science, technology, engineering and mathematics? Well, before we answer it, of course, we're academics, there's a caveat. Uh, it's got to be open to people, places, methods, and ideas. It's got to be available outside office hours. It's got to be inclusive. It's got to be as accessible as the rest of what the Open University does, because that's what we do do. And it has to provide an authentic interface to real data. Those are the criteria that are set down. And so what do we call it? We call it the Open STEM Labs. I'm pleased of the opportunity to explain this because it's a, it's a concept that's been clear in my mind for some time, but in conversations with people, when they start to glaze over, I realize that it would be much easier if we just had a building. Then we could explain it better. So imagine the open STEM labs as a building. This is the space in which we're going to do our laboratory work or our observatory work. And within that building, there are different regions. There is the zone called the Open Science Laboratory. And, and many building projects, you build one bit first and then you save it, you get more money and build the rest of it. We built that bit first, courtesy of the Wolfson Foundation. And then, thanks to Hefke, we've been able to add two new wings, the Open Science Observatories. We were doing some of that already in the Open, STEM lab, uh, the open Science Lab, now we're doing a bit more. And then the Open Engineering Laboratory, we weren't really addressing that part of the curriculum and it's fantastic that we're now able to do it. So we put our team together, we got our bid together and we got the resources and why have we done it? What, what do I want you to go away thinking? This is the reason why they did it. I've, I've got it down to just six bullet points. Of course, when you make a bid, it's six pages. But this is a distillation of it. So I'm just going to pick these things out to remind you why we're doing it. We want authentic online practical work in labs and observatories for our students. We, we have an obligation to provide that. And we have an enthusiasm to provide it. We want access to tools of professional science and engineering and we want collaborative learning environments. That's what being in a lab, being at an observatory encompasses. And then we want a place where we can do pedagogic research into active STEM learning. This is active learning that we're going to be witnessing and we want to make it better for seeing it happen. We want teaching collaborations with other educators outside the OU. And once we've got it on the wire, it doesn't matter where that other institution is. And we want engagements between researchers teachers and students. And we're able to do that because we've got the kind of equipment that researchers like tinkering with, like playing with, and like showing off. So I think we have the right elements to it. So much so that my boast is what it says at the bottom of that slide there, the online open STEM labs, practically better than the real thing. Because we have all these other affordances around it, particularly the, the collaborative working, the, the collaboration across institutions across the planet. That's how it works. There's our laboratory building, the Open STEM Labs, and here are students sitting in their garrets uh, with their Wi-Fi hubs.